Hey guys, this is Victor again from Vitagenics. And uh, as always, please read my disclaimer, okay? Um, today, I wanna to talk to you about water. And in particular, structured water or charged water. I already have a lot of other videos out there uh, on water and hydration. So if you don't find your answers here, please check my other videos. I'm going to try to give you some different insights in this video. All right, so first of all, what is water? I think most people know H2O, okay? And most people have seen this idea, right? The, the oxygen with the two hydrogen atoms. I'm not gonna go into chemistry, but I am gonna explain some things that you probably did learn in high school. So I'm gonna, make it, gonna try to make it a little more interesting for you, throwing in a little color here to make it easier to understand. And at first, I'm going to explain just this basic idea, this water, one water molecule, which is these three atoms, right? Two hydrogens and an oxygen. They're bound by a covalent bond. It's a very strong bond. Most things in your body are bound this way, most molecules. Now, getting into the more interesting things, a molecule, right? One molecule of water, this H2O, it can move in three different ways, okay? It can rotate like it does here. And let me give you another hint. Microwaves heat things by causing water molecules to rotate. This is not good for us. This is not how we normally heat things. We normally heat things by moving, right? So heat, when we measure temperature, it's about the motion, the movement, or the translation through space of the different molecules and they bounce off of each other and as they heat up, events, eventually they get so far apart they become gas, right? But microwave creates that by spinning and that's, that's really not so cool. So anyway, you've got this rotation, you've got this movement and then there's one other thing and this is the vibration and this is actually the vibration within the molecule of the atoms where it actually stretches the molecule in different ways. So let's look at this idea. And with this idea of vibration, I'm gonna talk about dead or living. Is water dead or alive? Now, in the normal sense of life, we don't talk about water as dead or alive because we have this idea in biology that life is carbon-based, etc. But we all know all life requires water. And I'm really talking about water being like electrically alive. And even more than that, it goes even beyond that. But when we have water that we would, that many people would call dead, it means it doesn't have much of a charge, okay? And I'm gonna to explain to you, because this is what the key is, the charging leads to the structure. So we have this kind of dead water that's not charged, and thus it's not structured, and thus it has less energy, okay? And, and the energy in water can be held in many different ways. It's quite complex. Now, you've probably seen this picture of a water molecule because water is actually, we say it's bent, it's not linear. The hydrogen kind of moves to one side a little bit. It makes like these ears, okay? Um, and so you'll always see these pictures maybe upside down, the position doesn't really matter. Uh, but there is some variation in that shape and I'm gonna show you that now. So charged water, right? This I told you this vibration. When this water picks up certain vibrations from certain types of energy, it can do this, okay? So this is one of the ways in which the hydrogen, I mean the water atom can vibrate, okay? And this is a, a symmetrical stretching that we have here, or I'm sorry, this is scissoring actually, all right? And so you're seeing it's changing shape, not so much, but this is holding that extra energy. So this is another way water captures energy. And there are, three, there are three basic ways that it does this. So this is a symmetrical stretching. The first way was scissoring. And then another way is this asymmetrical stretching. So these are the three common or standard ways that a one, one water molecule can vibrate. And this is a way in which it captures and holds this extra energy. And so if we can do this, if we can provide the energy to the water, it will start to do this. And this charge 
is then going to lead to other things. Okay, so once, once the water is charged, we can see other things happening. We can start to see the water structuring. Okay, it is the charge that leads to that. And how does it do that? Well, what happens is as you are charging it, and you, you notice the hydrogen moves a little bit further away from the oxygen, and it only does this for a moment. These are called dipole moments. It's actually changing like trillions of times per second. And so when it stretches away, the hydrogen becomes a little bit more positive because it gets away from the electron cloud, we say, or away from the electrons, away from the negative charge. And therefore, on the opposite sides, we get a little bit more negative. So you have this dipole or this polarization. And it actually, so you actually have these four points. You actually have these two positive points and two negative points. It's a very general kind of thing in the space. Uh, general and yet also quite precise because as you do this, as you create it with a really good charge, you'll start to see this happen. You start to get hydrogen bonds. And so you'll see here, you've got one water molecule then surrounded by other molecules. And the positives and the negatives, they start to line up. They start to line up, and then if you give it enough charge and you keep going, you start to get these hexagonal shapes in 3D. You start to get these hexagonal shapes and layers that are all connected. And it's a really pretty cool thing. And so, if, if again, if you're charging it enough, and I should also mention, if you charge it too much, you're gonna break these shapes, right? So too much energy. Like if you charge water and you get it structured and you put it in a microwave, right? It starts spinning, right? It's gonna break your structure. Now, there's another thing I really want to emphasize here. Check out this cool picture. So here again, you see the hexagonal patterns of structured water. And in this case, we have ions of minerals in the hexagons. So structured water is a really good solvent. And this is why I mentioned to people, put a little salt in your water. You want to really clean it, right? So we're assuming you have like really pure water, so these aren't toxins that are trapped here, right? And of course, large things, like large toxins and stuff, they're also going to per precipitate out. So structuring water can actually work to cleanse water. And there are actually filtering systems that work that way, it's, it's very interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to mention and point out to improve structuring or to improve the impact of structuring and charging, you wanna have some minerals in your water. And salt, just very simple, some good healthy salts work really well. And when you do this, you give this structured charged water additional abilities to capture different energies because these, with these other minerals in the water, you have the ability to, uh, to capture and hold additional good frequencies. So there's a lot of energetic things going on here. And with that, you know, so where I'm talking about like at a, at a molecular level, at an atomic level, but then this leads to field charges across the water. So it gets really complex. I'm not gonna go into that here. Just very simple, you structure your water. It's better to structure very clean water that does have some minerals in it, okay? So how to charge water, right? Well, how do I charge it? So many different ways. And you'll see I have listed here. This is not everything, uh, but this is a lot. Sunlight will do it, okay? And keep, again, something in mind too much of anything will actually destructure water. So whatever you're doing, you want to understand the process. So sunlight, which structures water in, in nature, will also destructure water over time. So we can have stagnant pools out in nature, even though they're exposed to the sun. And this is because motion is also important. And so you'll see in the list, you're gonna find motion. So certain electromagnetic frequencies will structure water. Certain sound frequencies will structure water. Crystal energy or scalar energy, whatever you want to call it. The Itericare device. Um, and I mentioned the Itericare device a lot recently because it's using two different things to structure water. It's using crystal energy and it's using certain electromagnetic frequencies. 
And as I mentioned, these are trillion, these frequencies are in the terahertz range, trillions of times per second that we're creating these vibrations in the water molecules. Okay, so then, and, and there are other devices that can do this. There are even um, uh, not only just other frequency devices, but there are static devices, meaning like flasks and wands and like a surface, a crystal surface, the water will mimic that crystal structure. Okay, so it's a, it's a really cool thing. So we can use a good, clean crystal structure to seed the water, whether it's using crystals or, or certain wands or flasks, etc. All good. So, so geometry is actually an important factor. And um, one other hint I'm going to give you here before I end this video, and this is really pretty interesting, egg-shaped containers will help to preserve the structure of water longer. So I get this question a lot, like how long does water stay structured? It's really difficult to give this answer because there are negative influences that destructure your water. So if you structure it and it's in a good environment, for example, out in nature, right? Water is running down a river, it's getting sunlight, it's getting vortex, it's getting the influence from Earth's magnetic field. It's like constantly being structured. It ends up going underground into wells, aquifers that are still moving, and now it's cool and dark. That actually helps preserve the structure. Now it's not getting too much sunlight. And so out in nature, much of your water is or was structured. Now it's more complicated because of pollutants in, in much of the water. But nature structures water just kind of automatically through the water cycle. And again, we are disrupting that a lot with our pollutants, so that's a different problem. But anyway, at home, you structure your device, put it, or you structure your water, you put it in an egg-shaped container that will help to preserve the structure. Again, an egg, nature created that shape for a reason. And even through history, we see most of our vases and things are egg-shaped. Um, I don't think it was just for aesthetics, okay? It's, and scientifically, we know this, we can see it. It is not easy to test whether or not your water is structured, so that's another problem. Some people can taste or feel a difference in structured water, but not everybody can, and there are no simple tests. It's very complex to really figure out how structured water is. So what you do is you, you learn the practices, you learn how to do it, you get the, the devices, you learn the different ways, and you just, whatever way fits your lifestyle, and try to structure your water, because the benefits are enormous. I'm not gonna list them here. I have other videos talking about that. But trust me, it's worth the effort to make structured water. All right, so I hope that has answered some of the outstanding questions that I've had. There'll be more. Let me know if you still need more insights on structured water. Uh, how it works or why you should have it, etc. Thanks for watching.